Today we're going to take a look at German coordinating conjunctions. Specifically, what we're going to do is, in this lecture, uh, begin as we usually do with an example in English, where we take two separate sentences and join them together into one sentence by means of a coordinating conjunction. And then we're going to look at a similar example in German. The first example we'll look at is uh, two sentences that have the same subject and joining those sentences. And then we're going to have a brief example of two sentences with different subjects and joining those together by means of a coordinating conjunction. After that, we're going to take a short look. We're going to take a look at uh, a short list of German coordinating conjunctions. There's about five of them. Two of them sort of represent difficulties for students and those are aber, aber and sondern. So we're going to be taking a closer look at those, how, uh, how they differ and when do you use them. And then at the end we're going to sort of uh, synthesize our knowledge into a list of uh, two rules, a short list of rules governing coordinating conjunctions. So, looking uh, beginning first with an example in English, uh, we have essentially it could be uh, a situation, the same situation, um, although I'm using two separate sentences to describe it. I sit on a bench, I read a book. Now, um, even though if I say these sentences to you as they are uh, displayed on a screen, uh, you would understand what I'm doing, it nevertheless sounds kind of simple, right? I sit on a bench, I read a book. Um, since it's the same situation, I could, or I, could I not, uh, bring those sentences together so that it's the same situation and the same sentence. And we do that by means of a coordinating conjunction. So, for example, I sit on a book, uh, I sit on a book, I sit on a bench and read a book. Now, what I can do in this sentence here is, since I am the subject of both sentences, I sit on a bench and I read a book, when I bring the sentences together and join them by means of a coordinating conjunction, I can drop out the subject in the second sentence because it's redundant. I, it's understood from the beginning of, uh, from the prior, uh, the, from the sentence before. So I sit on a bench and read a book. Um, what does it look like in German? So, ich sitze auf einer Bank, ich lese ein Buch. Again, we have sort of the same situation, um, but I'm using uh, the same example, uh, the same situation as described in the English example. Um, it's one situation, but I'm using two separate sentences to describe it. So, ich sitze auf einer Bank, ich lese ein Buch, it sounds sort of clunky. It would be much nicer, it would flow much better, if we were to take these sentences which describe the same situation and put them together in the same sentence. And we can do that, as we did in English, by means of coordinating conjunction. Ich sitze auf einer Bank und lese ein Buch. Um, as in the English, I took the re I removed the redundant subject because we've already established who's doing the action in the prior sentence. Now, if I have a sentence, however, where there's two separate subjects, like this one right here, ich sitze auf einer Bank und Thomas liest ein Buch, then I'm going to have to retain that uh, second subject in. Uh, but otherwise, everything else sort of remains the same. So, what are the coordinating conjunctions? There's essentially about five of them. Um, and actually, some of them are very close to English. Und, and, uh, oder, or. Um, it gets a little bit difficult with aber and sondern. Aber meaning but, with however. Uh, sondern also meaning but, but sort of uh, with the meaning of rather or, or on the contrary. And I'm going to take a look at these in greater depth in just a second. And then finally we have den, which means because or for. Uh, it sort of has a, I guess, sort of a, a softer, uh, more of a causal sense than, than weil uh, in German, which also means because. But at this moment, let's take a closer look at aber und sondern. 
Now, the first sentence is groß, aber schlank. He is large, but slender. Uh, so we're still, basically we have two complementary ideas. That he's, he's a tall person, he's a large person, and he is also, but also he's uh, slender, right? Uh, one doesn't negate the other. So there's two characteristics that describe this person. However, the second sentence, as nicht groß, sondern klein. Um, the first part of the sentence, the first uh, clause, is negated. It's negated by either by a nicht or a kind. In this instance, it's negated by nicht. So we're saying that he's not large, but rather he's small. So essentially, what the second sentence is doing, as nicht groß, sondern klein, is presenting two mutually exclusive ideas. He's not large, but he's small. Whereas the first sentence with aber is there two complementary ideas. He's large, but he's also uh, very slender. So and that sort of highlights the difference between aber and sonder. Now the main thing that we need to know with, or the main things we need to know with coordinating conjunctions, uh, two central rules. Uh, coordinating conjunctions, when you use one, they don't affect the word order of the sentences that are joined. The verb will still remain in the second position. When we do our exam, when we have our lecture on subordinating conjunctions, you'll see that the word order is affected. And then finally, each sentence can essentially stand independently of the other. So, uh, I sit on a bank, I, I sit on a bench, I read a book. Essentially, they're two independent sentences that make sense by themselves. So, that's, essentially, that's it uh, on coordinating conjunctions in German.